remind you that we are in a webinar with youth of south asia today we are discussing on youth role in combating covid 19 uh, we have speakers from afghanistan bangladesh bhutan india maldives nepal pakistan and sri lanka today we um, we uh, will be discussing on how youths are being mobilized in your country by your government uh, by your local government and central government to fight against climate change sorry covid 19 um, so um, with not wasting too much on time um, i would like to request to uh, welcome all the guests uh, in this uh, program all the speakers in this program i would like to request sir narendra joshi from uh, south asia partnership to uh, to welcome all the speakers and uh, participants today thank you sir now uh, up to narendra sir. okay thank you abhinav ji for providing me such an opportunity to welcome such a grand event sir am i hello sir narin sir disconnected okay uh, due to technical issue i think uh, he um, he is not audible to us but uh, um, hope he will be audible we'll be again giving him chances to welcome you on behalf of uh, uh, all the organizers i um, welcome you all to the program to let me again remind you of the uh, let me again tell you about today's speaker from afghanistan we have jarif safa safa bakhtiari then we have from bangladesh m mohammad talibur islam rupon and then from bhutan we have namagel dema from india we have bani mandal from maldives we have mrs thaima jadullah from uh, Pakistan, we have Jassi, Hasif Jafar Iqbal. From Nepal, we have Ex-Minister Sunil Kumar Manandar. From Sri Lanka, we have Dimutu Daluwate. Today, in today's program, we'll go by alphabetically. Yeah, uh, yeah. Arina, I have come up, huh? Yes, sir. Please. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I was supposed to say something in the main line. No, it was disrupted. The, the first of all, I would like to thanks for the participants for the valuable time in such a crucial uh, webinar. And the secondary, I would like to thank the organizers for organizing such a crucial event in such a crucial moment of time. A special thanks goes to Abhinav, who is taking care of everything and doing every possible efforts from his side. And I would like to give uh, thanks to the organizer, Youth Development Center, See and Learn Our Future. So it is a collaborative effort of South Asia youths. And as we are very much aware that now the present crisis of COVID is not only affecting the specific country or the region, it is the pandemic of whole world. If we see the figure of today, even the 469,000 people have already been suffered and we have already lost. 46,000 people. So if we see in Nepal, you know, it is also growing up. Uh, so everywhere in South Asia, it's a very crucial problem and we have to come out of it at any cost at, with, with, with our full efforts. So the, it has, as the COVID has multiple effects, so it should be tried to solve through holistic and multi-stakeholder partnership approach. So it will have a multiple effect, even if we see the result of sus uh, sustainable development goal, that is the goal number one, you know, if we see the poverty, it will definitely have effect to increase the poverty at global level. So the present figure shows that almost 10% of the world population are in extremely poor. And it is estimated that 8% people will be increased through this pandemic. 
So if we see the other goals, you know, the goal number two, no hunger, it will have definitely effect. Good health, it will have definitely effect. So it will have effect on all the 17 goal and 169 target set by UN. That is, uh, you know, the 15, uh, that is the uh, SDG goal. So the another part is that, you know, the youth of South Asia are very energetic and have a very voluntary zeals and they are in one way or another united through different networks and through different civil society organizations also. If we see the history of civil society organization of South Asia, it is very rich and most of those civil society organizations are led by youth. So we are very hopeful that the youth of South Asia will have very tangible contributions to combat the COVID-19. So with this much uh, remarks, I would like to thank all the participants for their valuable participation and organizers for organizing the thing. And I hope the grand success of this webinar. Thank you, Abhinavji. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Nanan Joshi, sir. Nanan Joshi, sir, is Executive Director at South Asia Partnership Nepal. Um, South Asia Partnership Nepal has been doing very excellent uh, work on peace and youth, uh, youth capacity building as well as youth engagement sector. Thank you, sir, for coming, joining us and uh, enriching us with your valuable words. And with now, I will, for or now, I will formally start the uh, program with a speaker section from first we have uh, from Afghanistan we have Jarif Safa Bakhtiari he completed his economic studies and have diploma of servant leadership from global international institute is working as fundraising and partnership manager at refugees organization by the name of help for refugees he's also founder of Cup dialogue club uh, we are very happy that Jarif uh, Safa Bakhtiari is today with us. It's very honor for today's program that he's, he will be enlightening us with how Afghanistan is tackling with the uh, COVID-19 situation and how the um, situation of um, uh, Afghanistan in COVID-19 is. So now it's up to you, sir, Mr. Jarib Sabakyari. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Do you have my sound? Yes. Do you, do you hear me? Yeah, 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 you are audible. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Avinav and, uh, and his team for working uh, closely with him and for providing such a uh, great opportunity for us uh, to talk about the competing and about COVID-19 in our countries and communities. Uh, first of all, I'm so sorry because uh, now uh, in the outside of uh, the, my uh, room is running in Jakarta. It's so running. Maybe some uh, noisy uh, running is uh, disturbing you, but hopefully it's uh, it's not uh, affected in my talking. Uh, and uh, it's my pleasure to have a chance and to get a chance for being here and uh, I talk about my. Uh, presentations or uh, perspectives about COVID-19, about how the role of youth, Afghan youth for competing the COVID-19 during this epidemic. I understand that how much this COVID-19 affected badly for every country. For, since, December, uh, since December till date that we are facing with this same um, global issue with this challenge that uh, unfortunately uh, uh, affected badly. We must keep the uh, social distance and we uh, we keep uh, safe and talk uh, with our friends, family to be safe more because this global issue is not just for Afghanistan, it's for all global global and all countries that they are, uh, we are, they are, that they are facing with this challenge. But fortunately, uh, as a young generation, as a part of this community, I know that everyone and every individual that um, like you that we are struggling with and we're working to, uh, to combat this COVID-19 in Afghanistan. According to update uh, report that uh, today I got from Ministry of Health in Afghanistan about uh, uh, 29,481 uh, 29, uh, case affected uh, in the five by the Ministry of, uh, Ministry of Health public health in Afghanistan. That, is, that shows that it's so badly and uh, affected uh, and the people make more concern about 
uh, the COVID-19 during the pandemic. Uh, fortunately, as I, as I mentioned, as a part of uh, the community, as a part of this uh, uh, global community, uh, we and we have the same experience with the other countries like you, like other countries uh, that uh, maybe they have. Uh, they will uh, explain that how can they compete and how can uh, make a struggle for uh, how to do the COVID nineteen. Uh, but here, I just, uh, because of the like, of time, just I mentioned the two important and the two major things that uh, as a young, as a young leaders and as a, as a part of this community that we have done uh, we, and we work closely with the government is uh, the first one is uh, the, the role of superv uh, supervisory of youth. It means that we supervise the, uh, we come, we come uh, as a role of supervisory, you know, as you know, Afghanistan is like uh, like your countries is facing with the same danger and uh, dangerous face, and uh, that's called uh, COVID nineteen. It means coronavirus that affected seriously on the economics and social aspect of the community. Unfortunately, you know that Afghanistan is still uh, facing with some uh, problems like social problems, as economic problems that. Uh, uh, there is uh, more than uh, 60, 60 people uh, of Afghanistan, uh, 60 person of Afghanistan is under the poverty, is living, uh, is their poor and their charity, their needy peoples, which is if, uh, which all, uh, and but uh, in the same times the COVID-19 affected badly. But as a role of uh, uh, super, uh, supervisory, uh, we supervise the, uh, each and every task and activity of government and uh, Minister of Public Health during the COVID-19, during the, these epidemics. Because you know that the, uh, international donors funded more than $100 for Afghanistan to uh, compete and to um, fight against COVID-19 or, or against virus corona. We control when we talk, when we uh, make a group to supervise the task and the activities of our governments. You know, uh, uh, about uh, uh, 60, uh, more than 65 percent of Afghanistan is young generation. They are, they are under the age of 35 years old, and it's um, between the level of between 18, 18 and uh, uh, 35 years old. We make a group, work with enter and, uh, and talk with each other make a channel through different platforms. For example, we make a Facebook group, WhatsApp group, Twitters, and make a different channels as an online platform through online platform to work with each other to control and to see that the, uh, what is, uh, uh, and observe the task, the activities, the budget of uh, the project that we got it from different countries with uh, different international donors. It means that now we know, fortunately, we know that uh, uh, who is responsible for uh, doing their jobs, for uh, uh, competing with, or uh, for doing some good task for how do the COVID-19 uh, as a, uh, in government levels. We, uh, besides that, uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, okay, it means that we know that we closely work with governments in Afghanistan government, we have a special community by the name of a special community for COVID-19 that is under supervisor of uh, second vice president of Afghanistan. We work closely with uh, uh, with uh, vice president to ask them about the, the COVID-19 about the projects. The second and uh, the second things that we uh, we have done is practical role of youth. It means that we have done some practical actions and uh, to get more more outcomes and significant uh, works uh, for uh, competing, uh, uh, competing COVID-19. The core mission of these work is how it means that to know and uh, support community and needy people and charities directly. For instance, we did uh, some research and uh, uh, talked with uh, our elders like father, mother, and brother to give us the name of those needy and charities that they really need uh, uh, food stuff during the epidemics. We help them. Furthermore, we launch online consultations program to learn our uh, our nation that how can they use masks, uh, consider uh, healthy healthy aspect of the during epidemic and during epidemic. 
the same time, we also invite those, uh, those friends that they are working and is starting outside of the, of, uh, of the country to come and provide some online classes for those kids that they miss their classes, miss their schools, and also have online psychologists and health consultations we gave us more significant outcomes during coronavirus. So, by the way, I want to sum up my talk. I do believe each of us has a role model or as a role model our emerging leaders. We trust that every problem has a solutions. We can find and we can work together to get to, uh, to find some uh, uh, to work and endorse. We, it needs uh, some responsible and those people to fight with uh, this COVID-19. We did, uh, we did this two tasks uh, uh, for combating the uh, COVID-19 as a, as a role model of the young generations. Finally, I believe that the science will hopefully, and science will provide the solution at, uh, of COVID-19 soon. And I believe in God that uh, uh, one day we can solve this global issue and global challenge problems. And finally, I say that it's stay safe and be positive and thank you so much for providing such a good chance for me. Thank you, Mr. Zarif Sapa Bakhtiari. It's very nice to hear from you the situation of Afghanistan and how Afghanistan government is uh, um, government is tackling the situation of COVID-19. What is the COVID situation there? How youth are being mobilized? Thank you, Mr. Zarif Sapa Bakhtiari, to joining us in this uh, important program of South Youth of South Asia webinar on how uh, youth can play vital role in combating COVID-19. Uh, thank you once again. And now I would like to invite Mr. Mohammad Talibur Islam Rupam, he, who is a columnist at New Is Dhaka. He is also a awardee at Indonesian Art and Cultural Scholarship at the very young age. He is ambassador for different international organizations. He has been. Uh, he has been. Uh, um, he has been awarded with many uh, many awards. He is currently co-founder, executive strategic director at Reimagining Society. At a very young age, he has been doing excellent work for the youth empowerment. So now I would like to invite Mr. Talibur Islam Rupam. Hello. Yes, uh, yes. You are audible, Mr. Talibur Islam. Okay. Welcome to Thank you so much, uh, Amino Bhai, so for having me uh, on this uh, uh, good uh, occasion. So, uh, for uh, like, uh, I, I'm starting from the end. Like you talked about about my recent uh, organization that I have uh, founded with my other team member. Uh, it's called Reimagining Society. So, uh, am I audible? I mean, am I audible? I'm, I'm just unmuted. We are very good audible, very nicely audible. Okay, great. So, uh, uh, so uh, about when we talk, talk about, you know, youth uh, in South Asia, and then uh, we call, we come up with the idea, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm coming uh, after that. Uh, I'm coming about my current country situation about and how we uh, combat COVID-19 in our country but uh, before that uh, i'm uh, i'm coming with my own orga organization that i'm working with so i have just uh, uh, co-founded uh, a organization called reimagining society with my other team members so it, it's work on the well-being of the people so see uh, co what covid 19 teaches us that uh, it's not not only economic and safer so we need both uh, well-being in physically and mentally so that's how we uh, our you know organization uh, uh, come in so now we are working on on you know uh, to spread the wellness so that uh, people can work on on the wellness so now i am coming with, with uh, uh, like two days uh, like uh, like uh, the issue first of all uh, let me uh, uh, go with, uh, about about my country like bangladesh how is tackling See, like uh, Bangladesh, you know that Bangladesh is one of the uh, like most populous country in the world. So the density is so high that uh, here the you know the risk of transmission of this virus is much more than any other countries who have uh, less population but uh, has have a very uh, great area. 
so but our government uh, has you know uh, like uh, when we uh, got our first uh, infected case of covid 19 like all the uh, sectors were closed uh, uh, like uh, our transportation and uh, all the entry point so but uh, what happened since uh, bangladesh economy uh, 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 depends on the you know like uh, on the function of the country because uh, uh, our uh, we ha we are kind of industrial country so we need to you know rely on on the sector so what we do like after you know after having a uh, two and a half uh, uh, nearly two months uh, lockdown in bangladesh so our uh, government has decided to start the economy uh, like now uh, like the offices and all other uh, institutions are open in a uh, restricted way except the, uh, like an education and all the education institutions institution are shut down yeah i see so uh, so now we are also trying to you know uh, since uh, you probably know that bangladesh is the second largest uh, exporter of garment sector in the world after just after china so we have opened the uh, you know gar uh, garment sector here in bangladesh but uh, since uh, as i told you that uh, bangladesh is very uh, overpopulated country uh, so uh, that's why the transmission level is so high so it still is going on so we don't know uh, when will it happen so there are also some lacking some you know uh, but uh, this is the, the scenario is still the world uh, considering the all so uh, but the youth uh, in bangladesh are playing the uh, you know one of the most remarkable role in this uh, pandemic uh, because uh, since uh, government uh, is not solely capable to you know yeah so hello yes yes you are audible okay that's great so uh, so, uh, so what we uh, what our youth organization uh, is doing is like uh, we are have uh, like the organization that uh, that can provide a different kind of services like you know like food like uh, and other you know uh, sanitizing uh, uh, materials so they are providing as much as possible and also the awareness since uh, covid 19 is completely new and you probably know that how uh, like the country in south asia is it's not uh, much you know uh, related to this kind of uh, uh, disease earlier like swine flu uh, previously swine flu ebola and other virus uh, have not uh, had not come to you know this region except the you know african and uh, other region so uh, why uh, yeah, people are also need to be you know uh, careful and also need to be taught of what uh, about the this disease and uh, you know uh, the catastrophe uh, of this disease so that's how what uh, like uh, the youth of bangladesh is doing alongside other you know uh, like uh, like uh, charity work like you know providing the best necessity like such as food so and and uh, other health equipment so uh, now they are uh, we are trying to you know uh, have a, ma a crowdfunding and all other uh, if crowdfunding is not possible we try to you know uh, volunteer ourselves uh, uh, so that you know uh, the manpower uh, can be also arranged by us for for the cost so uh, so currently we are doing like this and uh, and uh, our you know the people of bangladesh is also really pleased about the role of youth because uh, since uh, bangladesh is still a developing country so the health sector is not uh, not much uh, improved and there are many things to develop so so the, what happened so that's why uh, you know like uh, and also the other other facilities are also not free so that's how like youth you know uh, is playing the most magnificent role in the in the history of the country like uh, like youth is always you know uh, asset for bangladesh because like in liberation war and in even before uh, they they play their roles and even in uh, in the uh, situation of uh, covid 19 they are doing uh, this and on, on the other hand uh, since uh, i i work on uh, you know 
uh, analyzing policies like both foreign and national policies. So I uh, so we also try to since our uh, the total GDP of our economy uh, is like depend on uh, like mostly on uh, our export sectors like which is garment and pharmaceutical, and on the other hand uh, the uh, migrants worker. So we we are also working on it so that you know the you know the the people who who really you know who sacrifice their life and you know uh, to uh, go to overseas country to earn. Uh, so we are also looking after that that so that you know the overseas country uh, who are our potential you know uh, workplace for many of the people in Bangladesh. So we also uh, try to you know uh, make sure that they will uh, still keep our mic and workers and also they will also uh, bring uh, the workers that we have in our country so because uh, 12 uh, uh, the percentage is very high it's the 12 percent of total gdp depends on the migration sector so so that that's why like, like likewise in uh, in nepal so in nepal is like 41 percent uh, of total gdp depends on the migration so uh, so that's why like i guess in south asia uh, south asian economy uh, like uh, a, a great portion of this uh, economy is, is provided by the uh, you know migration workers and, and their income. So so this is the thing. And and uh, now coming back with my first you know uh, first topic about my organization. So uh, we are also trying to you know uh, spread the well-being. So because uh, uh, according to lots of researchers, uh, what what is coming up that. Uh, after this, you know, pandemic, even the pandemic will be eradicated, but there will be still a uh, problem, which will be, you know, mental health. So, uh, and this, uh, th that's how we come with, you know, well-being. So, well-being is a concept of, you know, both like physical and mental, and it's also connected to ecology, economy, and uh, lots of social uh, issues. So, uh, so we are, we are also trying to work on it, and we are having, uh, you know, dialogue and also trying to reach our policy makers uh, so that uh, this, uh, you know, uh, this recommendation can be added in, in the policy because without uh, adding in policy, we cannot have a bigger impact in a long run. So, and on, so this is the thing. And on the other hand, uh, since uh, it's South Asia, uh, so, and South Asia is, uh, is telling that uh, one of the hot spots for coronavirus, since we are really overpopulated. Uh, region and with less uh, facilities and also in uh, in sense of developing country so i think uh, if we uh, uh, if we you know if we work together in the south asia region like we can uh, we'll collaborate each other then i guess we'll have a very uh, great uh, solution for the covid 19 and i urge all of the youth and all the veteran people to uh, work with us and and uh, they can also work with through our organization or they can, you know, uh, have partnership with our organization so that we can, uh, uh, when we work together, we'll, of course, uh, have a bigger impact uh, than working alone. And, and COVID-19 is not about me, you, or, you know, they, they. so it's all about us. So we have to work all together. So I urge all the youth of South Asia region Let's work together, and for uh, for uh, at the in, in inclusion, I would like to give an example that uh, since uh, Abhinav Bhai was saying that I, I was a awardee of English and Arts and Culture Scholarship, so I've been to in Southeast Asia region, and because of other programs, I, I have been to you know uh, privileged to explore that region. So what I say, what I see in in Southeast Asia, the, which is known as Asian country, so they are really you know. They, uh, they have the tendency to work together and they are doing this all together. So in South Asia, I think we can, uh, we can have this uh, you know, opportunity to make ourselves into a better level and also you know, work in a larger uh, scale. So I hope and I believe that we, can, we will work together like other region is doing, just, uh, just you know, uh, eradicate this pandemic and also develop our future.
yes uh, thank you talebur islam rupam bhai you were excellent speaking on all the dimension of south asia and problem existing in uh, south asia as well as you talk very nicely on the situation of bangladesh Bang bangladesh really is going high on the number of cases of covid we are all very worried on the uh, situation yeah, that is uh, covid 19 is rising in um, bangladesh so thank you uh, mohammad talibur islam rupam now is turn of bhutan you know, from I bhutan for having have... with you uh, yes thank you um, uh, from bhutan we have namagel dema she is youth activist and serving as one of the youth leader of bhutan escort association so yes namagel is with us namagel am i audible can you just uh, yeah Yes, sir. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so thank much you. for organizing, for organizing, and Avinav Chandri sir for this wonderful opportunity. Respect it highly, dignitary. I'm Namgul Jama from Bhutan, and currently I'm serving as uh, one of the youth leader of the Bhutan Scout Association and the Rovers Mood of Bhutan. As the uh, speakers from other country has shared the information on how youth. is helping to fight against the covid-19 and how government is dealing with the youths i will be sharing the few or little information of the how the governments of our bhutan and the youths are fighting against the covid-19 and basically till now we have 70 covid-19 patient but none of them are dead luckily and the deadly disease called covid-19 should be kept in one mind and uh, people must be aware that uh, prevention must be the given the priority to the one can be safe right uh, and uh, conversation of well being uh, should be the essential obligation of humidity to fight against the outbreak of family called covid-19 the youth of bhutan follow the role and responsibility like social distancing and washing following the rules and regulation by not going against the government and also the under the guidance of the health ministry and the sectors you follow do's and don'ts of the covid-19 stated by the health sector beside giving the self in one self in safe one of the most interesting things youth of our country is doing is that uh, the many youths are involved in and engage in spreading the awareness of the covid-19 in remote areas area under the non profit uh, organization well these are the how the youths are fighting against the covid-19 and coming towards the government of our country our bhutan government uh, comes up with various activities such as chitin chikar though it is unfamiliar words the government comes up with uh, trainings for those youths who are not involved in job nor in studies so as they participate in the training and the government ensures youth youths to be home by the 6 pm strictly and the government also supplied the hand sanitizers and the basic necessities to the institution and household and though the physical classes are not uh, are going on the as education is important governments are supporting us the students to continue the education through online classes through television besides uh, giving the information they also provide the data for the uh, online classes and uh, also the provides awareness time to time uh, to us the citizens youths um, well this is the this are the information that i have and lastly i would like to thank uh, sir madam uh, who all are participating in this webinar i am really happy to meet you through this webinar and thank you so much for lending me your ears la thank you Thank you, Namagel. It was very nice hearing from you. Uh, you are young activist, and you joined us in this program of webinar of youth of South Asia, uh, where we are talking on how youth can play a vital role in combating with COVID-19. Thank you for joining us. Uh, uh, stay in touch. We'll be uh, very soon with another good programs ahead. Uh, thank you for your good words. You present very nicely. Um, I'm very glad that you share your work. words in very clear way thank you uh, namagel and now uh, uh, after bhutan uh, is from india we have bani mandal bani mandal is uh, a youth activist has engaged himself in different uh, 
different humanitarian work since the COVID entered in India. Then he is also a medical professional. So hearing from him will be interesting today. So Bani Mandal, it's now your turn. Uh, thank you for being with us. Hello? Yeah, yeah, please. Namaskar. Namaskar. Hello? Yeah, Bunny, we, we are hearing because all the mics are mute, so no one can respond to you. That's why you keep uh, keep putting your words. Thank you. Hello? Yeah, Bunny, we now are... Now we are... Yeah. Hello? Yeah, yeah, we, we are hearing you since all the mics are mute. So it's... Uh, you. It's, yeah, we are hearing you. You are audible. Yes, we are all now suffering to journey pandemic COVID-19 and now I am uh, doing my duties in the government hospitals now in the medical college and hospitals in our in this country. This hospital is also uh, COVID hospitals. Okay. Now our my country's situation is very uh, uh, COVID-19 and also my borders uh, situations because my one issue one issue to my during the time my, between the border my China. That's why my our country's my, my panel hello hello my, all are here. All the my, keep uh, keeping your words. Okay. Now our situation is very tough uh, because uh, our day in uh, success in our country is uh, good. Um, it is uh, now success and uh, but activity scales are more high but uh, returning uh, COVID-19 during this time um, our uh, medical teams are also uh, doing good jobs uh, because that's why uh, our success rate is um, uh, as like uh, parallelly uh, in world uh, such as countries. Uh, our country's is, uh, recovery rate is as like good and uh, disorder uh, and death rates is not too high. That's why uh, we uh, all are uh, not uh, Worried, and that's why um, uh, our my countries is states my dependence my various my area now unlocks. My during that times our my 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 until my fifteen August our all education universities are closed. My they are providing online my online classes and various area our country's native place is have not any students are provided to David educational system that's why we have uh, proposal to government uh, this uh, uh, year. All our uh, institutes uh, we were connected to one's educational model app. Uh, government is um, uh, now pandemic on more issues uh, because the China's borders. Uh, I you know about about all. That's why uh, our uh, all states very uh, worried about the uh, actions my 20 my, our my young my soldiers is death uh, and my various future arounds my injuries so my our government's my 
गवर्नमेंट एच मोस्ट एच फास्ट पंचायत सिस्टम वर्क इन वर्क एंड दिस सिचुएशंस कंटिन्यू मेजर स्टेट्स नॉट सो गुड कंडीशन बट सम स्टेट्स आर नाउ ड्यूरिंग आवर कंट्रीज लिफ्ट सेवन स्टेट्स इज गुड कंडीशन बट मैक्सिमम स्टेट्स इज वेरी बैड सिचुएशन बट कोविड पैंडेमिक लिफ्ट आवर ओन मन वर्कर मन आवर जी डी पी इज लो डाउन आवर यंगर्स आर जॉबलेस एंड वेरियर कंपनी आर स्पोर्ट दैट्स वाई आवर सर्कमस्टेंस इज ड्यूरिंग दिस टाइम इज वेरी bad situations ma uh, and top situations those who have ma uh, have ma who have ma uh, upcoming days ma uh, china's borders ma uh, ma uh, situations handling our countries as uh, soon as possible we need to ma uh, top solution and after that we are focusing our migrant labor ma uh, jobs and स्टूडेंट्स all from uh, this situation uh, hand to hand and uh, we all are recover and uh, our upcoming main focus thanks uh, next to our talking about next time thank you thank you bani thank you for sharing the condition on covid in india and also how the government is uh, tackling also you shared about the country as relation with china uh, we are very uh, we are very sorry to hear that uh, your so- soldiers were killed from both the countries at the war we are actually uh, peace lovers we are peacemakers so uh, so we uh, so thank you bani with uh, bani with us uh, today you uh, despite your busy schedule you came and joined us um, you are a doctor by profession so after this uh, we have from maldives mrs thaima jadulla she is uh, program director at society for health education and also youth member coordinator she is a youth activist she in a very short notice she joined with us we we are very excited to hear from her how the maldives government is uh, tackling the covid 19 situation how is the situation there in maldives uh, so it's up to you uh, mrs khaima jadulla thank you for being with us Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, just thank you so much for this opportunity, and I'm so delighted to see so many young and inspiring individuals on this platform. And I hope everyone is safe and well. Along with myself, our CEO, Mr. Ahmad Shafi, is here as well, so he'll be uh, speaking on behalf of our organization as well. Just before we go on to topic, I just wanted to give you a little background information on uh, what who we are and what we do as an organization. we are society for health education and we are an ngo based in so can you hear me okay. yeah all right 
Okay, so we are an NGO based in the Maldives, working mainly on thalassemia, mental health, sexual and reproductive health, and providing health education services. And we uh, specifically focus on youth and women empowerment as well. And uh, regarding the situation of COVID-19 in the Maldives, the first case of COVID-19 was discovered in the Maldives on March 7th and on 15th April in the capital city of Mali. As you may be aware, the Maldives is an island nation with many dispersed islands and the capital of Maldives, Mali, is one of the most congested cities in the world. So as you can imagine, the spread of COVID-19 was especially scary for us. Uh, to date, there are a total of 2,238 uh, confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Maldives and a total of 1,829 recovered cases and a total of eight deaths in the Maldives in, due to COVID-19. Um, I think Mr. Shafi is here and he can uh, add a little bit more on how the government is, uh, the strategies that the government is using on combating COVID-19. Shafi? Yeah, Mr. Shafi. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Taima. Uh, uh, and first of all, I would also like to um, extend um, um, our gratitude for giving us this opportunity. It's been a uh, very short notice for us as well. Um, in, in terms of, um, yes, in terms of um, uh, the government's engagement, um, the, the first uh, control measures that were taken was to control the, the borders in initially because we are a key tourist destination and the first uh, discovery of COVID cases came in our tourist resort. So the government was able to maintain without it coming into uh, contact with the population for over a month. But unfortunately, from April onwards, we have had the first uh, cases of community spreads uh, and uh, then uh, within the congested population of Mali, the spread had been uh, uh, just uh, uh, going. But now we, we are also fortunate that the government has been able to maintain it uh, within its control. There is special um, national task force that has been set up by the government and uh, uh, in terms of addressing this and, uh, and our health protection agency has been taking the lead uh, in continuing this. Just like in other countries, we've also been having um, uh, a lockdown uh, in, in the country. So the country is under a strict, complete lockdown, uh, especially uh, for uh, for foreign um, tourists uh, from coming in or travels being banned as well. And uh, with the capital uh, city, Mali, and with the other islands, travel also had come to a halt. The, biggest impact that we have had on the country is as we are uh, a tourist nation uh, dependent mainly or almost wholly on a tourism income. Um, uh, this has had a great impact e economically on our GDP, uh, on the uh, status of our employment uh, as well. So that's where I think the brunt of the situation is being borne by the youth mainly. Uh, so in terms of uh, controlling the situation, uh, it is now put uh, on a control and there has been gradual um, uh, relaxation of uh, our lockdown as well. And uh, the government has announced yesterday from the 15th of uh, July uh, that, that uh, we will also be opening our borders to allow for tourist arrival as well. So now in the process uh, of working towards recovery as well. Maybe Taima could continue uh, with uh, the youth engagement that has been happening uh, in, in this process and how well youth has been working with the government uh, in terms of uh, combating the COVID situation. Uh, back to you, Taima. Thank you, Shafi. So in terms of uh, youth mobilization to combat uh, COVID-19, uh, we've, we've been seeing a, that a remarkable amount of young people have been volunteering their time and their uh, expertise to com uh, combat COVID-19 in partnership with uh, multiple organizations. Okay. Um, for instance, we have Maldivian Red Crescent and the majority of the volunteers there are young people who have been providing uh, psychosocial support services 
And in addition to that, the Youth Ministry of the Maldives has also uh, mobilized a lot of young people to do delivery services of basic necessities like groceries, uh, medical supplies, and all of this. In addition to that, uh, due to COVID-19, like Shafi has mentioned, a lot of individuals have gone into uh, very sad situations whereby they are not able to access uh, health services or they are not able to be able to access their basic necessities. So it was, it was very remarkable to see that a lot of yeah. young uh, new businesses owned by young people have been coming up and have been providing help for these people. Yeah. And uh, I would also like to mention that uh, the majority of the health workers in the rapid response team is also young people in the Maldives. Mm, thank you, Thaima, and also the CEO of uh, uh, Society for Health Education, Mr. Ahmed Safiu. I apologize for the short notice, but despite the short notice, you made it, and you made it wonderfully here in the uh, South Asia Youth Webinar. It was very worthy hearing from you about Maldives here, and uh, the way you put your words and got uh, enlightened us with how the Maldives is tackling with the COVID-19 situation. In um, coming days also, we'll be um, taking support from Society for Health Education and mutually we'll be working for betterment of youth, uh, youth, cap um, youth leadership and capacity building in South Asia. Thank you, um, Mrs. Thaima and also Ahmad Safi sir for being with us. Um, from uh, with this now uh, we have from Nepal um, a very prominent person, ex minister for environment of government of Nepal, Mr. Sunil Kumar Manandar. He is the mentor of uh, us as well. He has been um, uh, mentoring in a different uh, uh, different webinar with us. He has been motivating us with his kind words. So, sir, um, up to you now for how the Nepal government is doing in COVID nineteen situation. Uh, please. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Aminabji. Uh, welcome and namaste uh, and good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy uh, that I got a chance to uh, see and uh, listen uh, the youth friends uh, uh, from uh, South Asia, uh, their situation and how they are coping with uh, uh, tackling with uh, this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, especially, I'm very happy that I got chance to know the situation in uh, Maldives because first time uh, I'm hearing uh, uh, the persons from Maldives. So it's very uh, good opportunity for me uh, that uh, Abhinav is providing us uh, to know uh, from different sector of uh, South Asian countries. So once again, thank you uh, for organizing uh, this important uh, uh, webinar. Uh, thank you, Abhinav. Uh, we all are facing a COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, unprecedented hardship. Uh, our daily life is really uh, paralyzed. Mm, you can say that uh, life is totally uh, disrupted. Uh, although within these three months, mm, uh, within these three months, some uh, situation is uh, having some normalized, but still, uh, the rate of uh, 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 COVID uh, positive is uh, getting high in Nepal. Uh, uh, just I will give you some example that uh, mm, just uh, 15 days before we have 5,000 uh, uh, positive cases. Now, within 15 days, we have uh, 10,000 plus uh, positive cases. So um, in Nepal, uh, uh, this uh, uh, this COVID-19 pandemic is uh, rising, uh, positive cases are rising, death numbers are rising, uh, although deaths are very slowly rising, but still rising. So uh, the situation is uh, grave. And, um, and uh, at present, uh, our government uh, uh, lockdown process is slightly changed. We have uh, mm, 77 uh, districts. So uh, out of 77 districts, uh, three districts were uh, declared as a red zone. So there is totally, uh, total lockdown is there. Uh, apart from that uh, three districts, as this uh, 
74 districts uh, in 74 districts people are people can uh, enjoy with marketing they can go to their office there is no uh, private uh, there is no public uh, transportation uh, all schools and uh, universities colleges colleges are closed uh, one can move only within their districts they cannot uh, move outside outside from their districts so you can say that this uh, uh, district wise uh, lockdown process is uh, developing in Japan. Uh, the main problem that we are facing is that uh, a big number of Nepalese uh, uh, young people are working in India and after this uh, COVID-19 pandemic happened uh, they rush away to come back to the country so if you ask me uh, a, a number is very huge 300,000 about 300,000 Nepalese uh, they came back to Nepal uh, because as uh, you know that our border is open for uh, we, 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 our border is open with India we don't need any document and passport so anytime they can cross the border uh, so uh, a huge number of Nepalese uh, they are crossing the border and 300,000 uh, Nepalese has already crossed the border. And during this period, uh, because, uh, because you see, uh, during the time of crossing, a small number of, uh, at the beginning, there is a small number of COVID, uh, COVID positive. But now, uh, slowly, uh, the person, they are coming from India and they are just contaminated and they are spreading this uh, uh, this uh, uh, covid positive cases so actually uh, the serious problem is at the area where we have border border area districts are have serious problem and another serious area is uh, in uh, far western far uh, remote area that we call far western area uh, because uh, there is a very limited uh, health facilities are there and huge uh, number of Nepalese are uh, entering from that area so uh, a huge number of uh, COVID positive is uh, spreading in that area so this is the situation and uh, uh, I'm very happy that uh, in one side government is uh, working uh, on the government umbrella but uh, independent youth networks uh, youth organizations, youth volunteers, youth clubs, they are so active during this time, during this uh, present time. They are, without their uh, cooperation, uh, so, nothing can be happened. So I'm very happy that our uh, youth are very ha actively contributing um, uh, to cope with, uh, to tackle with this uh, COVID-19 uh, situation. Uh, at the same time, uh, I am very happy to uh, say one, uh, one example only that uh, emergency response, uh, response center. Uh, there is one organization and even uh, uh, Abhinav Choudhury and Arun Nikharka, they are the main leading person of that organization. And they have a, a nationwide network of youths, uh, volunteers, and they are uh, giving a so uh, exemplary uh, contribution, service uh, to the people, uh, for the affected people uh, of affected area. So uh, I must say thanks uh, uh, the organization like Emergency Response Center and other uh, youth organizations. Uh, in one side, uh, life become very hard. Our uh, daily life is interrupted, I have already said. Uh, mainly it is directly impacted to our women, children, and daily wage uh, workers. Uh, and coming days, there will be more hunger, uh, more losing jobs, uh, financial crisis. This all together that we have to tackle. This is a really a serious problem. This is one side. The another side is, uh, that is very important. The other side is uh, uh, the climate, the environment. 
uh, the nature. If you ask me, uh, because of this uh, COVID-19, uh, nature is healing. Climate is, uh, climate is improving. Our air, uh, air is improving. Uh, our environment is uh, improving. Uh, there is less, uh, uh, less carbon uh, footprints. Uh, so it is directly uh, contributing to uh, mitigate uh, climate change. So these are the uh, positive response also uh, because of this uh, COVID-19. Uh, uh, here I must say, I am repeating so many times the same sentence. Again, I would like to repeat, as I am a former uh, environment minister, not only former environment minister, I am also an environmentalist, so I must repeat this sentence that uh, this COVID-19 is a strong message that we are getting from uh, nature. Nature is sending us a strong message. And what is that message? The message is that the present neoliberal world order doesn't work and will not work. The present order doesn't work and will not work. We need a new social order. We need a new philosophy, a new approach based on nature-based solution. Nature-based solution. We need to adopt this new philosophy that NIFTA is sending us a message. Uh, we shouldn't forget that we are the part of this nature. We are the part of this biodiversity. If we care nature and biodiversity, nature will also care to us. If we will not care, if we will not uh, uh, give importance to save the nature, to save our biodiversity, to save our wildlife, then this is one case of uh, COVID-19. And this type of COVID-19, maybe uh, in coming days, there will be a series of uh, new COVID-19 that we have to face. So the time has come. I can say clearly that time has come. We must respect the message of the nature. We should be ready to change our daily way of life. We have to change our lifestyle. If you ask me, what is, what is that? What we want to change in our uh, lifestyle? Can we use locally product food? Locally product? Can we use more recycled and reuse product? Can we uh, reduce our consumption of uh, meat products? Can we ready to change our daily life into sustainable way of consumption. Just I'm putting the questions. The time has come. We have to give the answer. We have to give the answer to the nature. Are we ready to accept the message coming from nature? If we accept, if we are ready to uh, follow the message coming from nature, I hope that uh, coming days uh, we can survive and we can tackle with these types of COVID-19. Youths, youths are not only future, you youths are present also. You represent present, you represent future. So you have a very big role to play. You have a very big role to play and you have to play. Uh, because you see, everywhere, the majority population are the youths. If when youths are ready to uh, start to play the active role, then only a society can uh, move towards a positive direction. So uh, in this uh, important uh, webinar, I would like to appeal to all the youths in our region, let us come together, let us work together, let us share our ideas, let us share our experiences, and that will be very important because these types of COVID-19 is not a national issue. It is not only a regional issue, it's a global issue. If the problem is global, then we have to tackle uh, with global voice. We have to act with globally. So uh, friends from, uh, uh, youth friends from uh, uh, South Asia, 
especially uh, our Abhinav, uh, Abhinav Bhai. He is very active organizing this type of webinar. I must thank uh, to Abhinav uh, Choudhury uh, that uh, it is directly helping to know each other, uh, the situation, uh, what is happening in Bangladesh, what is happening in Bhutan, what is happening in uh, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, India, and uh, Maldives, in yeah. Nepal. Uh, uh, Abhinav is uh, contributing, helping to know uh, uh, and getting chance to share our views. So once again, I would like to uh, thank uh, Abhinav and uh, say that let us work together. If we start to work together, we can fight against uh, this pandemic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Abhinav Ji. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for your kind words. You really always been a motivator for us. Thank you for speaking on behalf of the um, uh, speaker, is ex-environment minister of Nepal. He's also an environment activist as well as a very good speaker. So thank you, Mr. Sunil Kumar Manandar for being with us in today's program. We have all now after the uh, Sunil Kumar Manandar's turn for Pakistan on behalf of Pakistan, we have Dr. Hasib Jafar Iqbal. He is first editor, youth leader, human rights activist, pharmacist, healthcare professional and social activist. So, uh, when, uh, with uh, this, I would like to request Mr. Uh, Dr. Hasib Jafar Iqbal to uh, speak on behalf of Pakistan. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Arjuna. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Hasib Jafar Iqbal from Pakistan. Uh, in the name of Allah and the most mighty and beneficial, uh, I welcome all of you, my friends and the youth leaders, activists from around the globe, and special thanks to Abhinav uh, for giving me this opportunity to share my the situation of my country, Pakistan. Yes, sir. Uh, I am a healthcare worker, as said by the Abhinav. Uh, I'm Dr. Hasib. I'm working as a I'm assisting a government hospital here. At the first case of uh, Corona when came to Pakistan on 26th uh, February 2020. It was the first case and uh, since uh, 1st April till date, uh, to 24th June, the total number of cases is uh, 1 lakh and 88,000, uh, in which 1 lakh and about 7,000 are active while we have lost 3,700 lives uh, till date, uh, while with the 41.2% of the 77,000 recoveries we are having here in Pakistan. Uh, as it's a global pandemic and almost every country has been affected by the uh, COVID-19, uh, same year as Pakistan is uh, a developing country and most of the population, they live under the uh, poverty line, so they were badly affected by the uh, COVID-19. People have lost their jobs, uh, especially the daily wages. Uh, they were stuck in their homes uh, due to the uh, lockdown in the start because it was a complete lockdown uh, in the starting days. <clears throat> Later on, it was just converted to the a smart lockdown by the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Imran Khan. And so the people below the poverty line and those who belong to the middle class, uh, they were badly affected. I would like to share two uh, things uh, with two angles. I mean, the one with the youth activist, the social activist, who, uh, how they responded to this, and the government, how they responded to this. Uh, as I'm a social activist, so I personally feel, uh, felt this the need of the time to help those who were uh, affected uh, by the lockdown. We have almost uh, uh, more than 1,000 social welfare organizations that are led by the students and youth from 18 to 25 of the age. So all they came together and we decided to start a uh, food drive and a Russian campaign to deliver uh, food to the doorsteps of the poor people, the daily wages, the drivers, uh, and all those the uh, workers who were affected by this COVID-19. 
So in the start, we uh, just uh, delivered food items, and later on, then we also delivered the non-food items to each and every home. After the complete survey, after uh, to those who fill full, uh, fulfill the criteria, because we had set a specific criteria for the food campaign, so that it should uh, reach the uh, deserving people. Later on, the government also started uh, to give a monthly. Uh, salary, you can say, or money to all the families who were registered Pakistani citizens. They set a portal, uh, application, online application, and all of their families who were affected by the COVID-19, they received money at their home. We also personally we uh, we covered almost uh, twenty-five thousand families in in my province with food ration. Uh, what government is doing? I will share this that the uh, the government of Pakistan has taken unprecedented steps to counter the effects of COVID-19 crisis, but it's unclear if these will be enough given the challenges facing the country uh, prior to the pandemic. Uh, Pakistan is amongst the 180 plus countries uh, dealing with the coronavirus pandemic, uh, and there are now clear warnings of a global uh, economic recession. As workers continue to fall sick, factories remain shut, and healthcare systems become overwhelmed. Mitigating the health emergency and extent of economic loss will not be easy uh, for my country. And the country for 200 million is already going to uh, microeconomic stabilization. The spread of the disease uh, within and into Pakistan cannot be separated from the global context uh, as the world's urban, urban population. Uh, at 4.2 billion has now exceeded the global rural population. And the COVID-19 has already surpassed the death of the little of more recent outbreaks like Ebola, MERS, and SARS. While fatalities in Pakistan have uh, uh, till today are uh, 3,700. The government estimates suggested by, by the beginning uh, of June case in Pakistan could rise to 58,000. Uh, while mortalities could lie anywhere between 5 to 10 percent in this number. In all, eventually, Pakistan's healthcare system is likely to be overwhelmed because uh, uh, people are having issues uh, uh, having uh, finding space in the hospitals because we have a limited number of beds remaining in each and every hospital, especially in the rural areas uh, because they have no such facilities. Uh, and the outbreaks of the such scale expose gaps and factors in the underlying healthcare system. Uh, this can be related to the timely detection of disease, availability of the basic healthcare, uh, and tracing contacts. Uh, apart from the government side, we also uh, started awareness campaigns in cities and rural areas with me, with my team. Uh, I have a team of 70 volunteers with me uh, in my city. So we started awareness, uh, giving the uh, uh, showing them the hand wash techniques, uh, the what is the social distancing, and people then come up with uh, some frequently asked questions they used to ask like uh, uh, what is quarantine, what is isolation, what is the difference between them, and uh, what does isolation and quarantine prevent infections of others. As I am a healthcare worker, so uh, more of the people they approach me to. Uh, even they uh, just sometimes they ask, the, "Is it real or this is some uh, doing something else?" So, especially so difficult to convince the uneducated population to uh, aware them about the severity of this. So we are still, uh, we are still going uh, starting our campaign. We will continue. Because most of the people are still unaware of this uh, emergency. So, this was all from my side. And at the end, I would like to thank again uh, Abhinav Choudhury and all of you for bearing with me. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Hasib Zafar Iqbal. It was good hearing from you from Pakistan. You have been excellent humanitarian worker as well. I have been seeing your uh, social media posts regarding the way you were handling, um, um, uh, you're helping the poor with uh, food programs and all, all others. Thank you, Dr. Hasib Jafar Iqbal, for being with us from Pakistan. Now it's turn of uh, Sri Lanka. Hasib from Sri Lanka, we have uh, Dimutu uh, Dalovate. He is a young activist.
he has uh, he had engaged himself as a young political leader there in sri lanka some years back now for a few years back he is he was been working with world vision international as a program officer there then now he is um, working on regional cooperation now he is trying to establish uh, a network in south asia so dimuttu dalubate welcome you in the program now i handle you for your kind words thank you okay thank you very much abinav uh, and uh, actually i appreciate abinav because of this wonderful webinar you given us the chance and it's a time new beginning for for this new beginning and uh, so you saw the new concept you saw have a new concept so the youth for me this new beginning uh, especially uh, i would like the nature said system system is vast and there and nature so nature also created the new system new concepts and new systems and using technology and for that and especially our new new innovations with both negative and positive impacts in covid and most of the daily food in once in year in when we took any work on our daily income and most of small and medium business i couldn't hear your voice this small and medium Hello. Dimitri, are you audible? Uh, yes. Due to your internet, uh, yeah. Due to your ne poor network connection, we are not. Hello. Talking. Yeah. Due to your poor network connection. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Due to poor network connection, we are not hearing you so uh, so good. So, um, because it, in our Zoom application, saying that your bandwidth is low there. So, can you just check it and then uh, we can. Uh, if, If we can again the same problem. One minute to change my position. Yeah, yeah. I have one minute to change my position. Just one minute, I will. I have one minute. I will handle, Mister. Okay, yeah, just um, just a minute. I will handle one minute to Talibur. He was he he requested to speak. So Talibur is uh, just in a one minute. Can you put till uh, Dimutu is uh, fixing the problem? uh well um actually i was uh, i i would like to add like uh, when uh, someone else was talking about you know neoliberalism and all those economic policies i uh, see like uh, south asia is one of the region where uh, you know debt rate in the total gdp is uh, extremely high like in pakistan it is uh, sorry in uh, sri lanka it is 92% their entire gdp is uh, the uh, in in their entire gdp 92% uh, is from dev and same uh, the number is uh, uh, com comparatively uh, less in bangladesh pakistan uh, india and other south asian countries so uh, we need to you know we need to have some economic uh, strategies uh, among our countries otherwise the dev rate will be uh, increased more like is already uh, like the burden is so high uh, because so uh, that's why like the you know uh, countries from uh, uh, other region like china uh, america and other you know western countries has a uh, significant uh, influence on our countries even the you know when we we make uh, policy uh, make policies uh, they have uh, the you know tendency to influence uh, there also so uh, this is the time like uh, since other region you know work uh, together strongly and have very 
uh, friendly economic policy and foreign policy among them. So I think through the youth, we can we can uh, make a bridge, uh, both youth to youth of this region, South Asian region, and also uh, policymakers to policymakers. So uh, we we work as a pub, uh, you know as part of public diplomacy, and I hope that will also change the scenario because uh, the economic uh, economic situation is really terrible nowadays, and it might be worse than what is today. So so let's uh, I you know so let's like uh, instead of talking uh, so let's uh, like it's the time to take the action. So let's work on it and um, make the best utilizer, utilization of public diplomacy. So, uh, so this is the things that I, I, I would like to, you know, uh, convey. Like if you have uh, more time, then maybe I will add more. So, Dimutu, are you are you now? Have you just fixed your problems? Then? Yes, I, I can fix my problem now. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, can you hear me well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, then uh, first of all, I would like to say that the uh, pandemic situation is the fault of one existing existing system replacing with new concepts and new new method. And young youth generation is the most suited population for that because uh, youths are the persons who are having new ideas, new concepts and new new technologies, about new, technologies new, new methods and all all the all the things like that. Uh, in that situation especially in Sri like a country like Sri Lanka, uh, on that on that particular time most of the daily wage laborers lose their job opportunities and most of the private sector and small and small and medium business persons were losing their the job opportunities now became into normal with normal normal situation, and uh, the situation that uh, Sri Lanka reaches nearly two thousand deaths due to Corona pandemic situation is new. Uh, with, uh, it's according to the government statistic. Uh, most of the organisations are tending to empower youths in Sri Lanka, especially. Uh, uh, in, a, in a situation like that, uh, hello? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. We, we are hearing you. Especially uh, when when we when we see get past in Sri Lanka, in sudden disasters and sudden tragedies. Uh, in, the, in one in one thing, uh, this, when Sri Lanka isolated facing such situations like that, there, there were many countries and, and many organizations helping to Sri Lanka, but in this situation, this is. This is a somewhat extraordinary situation because the whole world is tempted with this situation and no any country and no any organization can do considerable stuff. We take tsunami, tsunami disaster in 2014. Uh, there, were, there were many countries and many organizations who were helping to Sri Lanka and uh, many, fun, many funding flow was there and, special, and as at that, at that time, this is not only for Sri Lanka, but for the whole world. On the other hand, at that, at that time, Sri Lanka was one of the poorest, poorest countries in, in the world. Now it became into middle income country. And due to that, no, no more support for Sri Lanka. That's why the, the time to wake up as young generation by ourselves. And uh, especially, uh, there, now there are a few organizations when NGOs remained in Sri Lanka to support, uh, support and they, they also have their base also mostly youth and generation. Uh, with that, uh, they are continuing their, their support to empower, to end. empower youth, empower young generation, and uh, especially their, to improve their livelihood. Innovative livelihood. That's a, that's a new concept, innovative livelihood. For new for the future world, the concept of most, most of the Sri Lankan organizations, especially government, also it's concerning new loan opportunities to start semi semi level businesses among among young generation. So uh, in a, a situation 
Sri Lanka uh, without no more supports. I, here, here we request all the youths in South Asia, let's get together with, with all. Let's help each other. And because we have to think positively. It's a new origin. Now, now, the, now, now this is the era, era, era of young generation is coming up. So at, as a South Asian youth, we have to help each other. We have to try each other. We have to do with each other. To take that South Asia to develop the world. Develop the world. And as same as to change this existing um, new, uh, neoliberal system. This thing with new system. And thank you very much, Abhinav, for this wonderful month. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dimutu, with us. So, uh, can I just, um, just a participant, Jafu, um, Jafu is there, can, can, can you just unmute him, Jafu, so that, yes, uh, hello, Jafu, hello. Hello, can you listen to me? Yeah, 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 please, please, just a minute, you can um, speak what you want to um, put your insight here. Well, uh, uh, do you have any particular question or uh, just uh, asking? Oh, uh, uh, since we could not recognize you, can can you just open your video so that uh, you can just yeah, give sure. introduction and then yeah. Well, hello everybody. This is Sumat Hamid Zafrin, and uh, I have hello. been a part. Yeah. Yes, I have been a part of the you know third Nepal Youth uh, Conclave in this year. So uh, that was a really amazing time I had with a lot of people. So uh, I was just wondering that a uh, uh, long day, uh, uh, it had, has been a long day that uh, I didn't see you people. Uh, so just, you know, uh, I'm, I'm really loving to this uh, meeting and uh, the, uh, you people are uh, really amazing, uh, the thoughts and the uh, Everyone is uh, trying to, you know, uh, put some new ideas how we can uh, do the betterment of the world. So it's really nice. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sumaya. Since your video was not coming and the name was coming as Jafu, so we got really confused that um, who is uh, who is in the audience side. Thank you for sharing your uh, thoughts about this program. Uh, we nearly at the end of the program is uh, one and a half hour. Uh, we listened from all the wonderful speakers from Afghanistan to Sri Lanka. Once again, for the latecomers, let me remind you, we had speakers from all the Asia, South Asian countries. From Afghanistan, we had Jarib Safa Bakhtiari. From Bangladesh, we have Muhammad Talibur Islam Rupam. From Bhutan, we had Namagel Dema. From India, we have Bani Mandal. From Maldives, we have Thayma Jadullah and Ahmad Saifu. From uh, Nepal, we have Ex-Minister Sunil Kumar Anandar. Then we have, from Pakistan, we have Dr. Hasib Jafar Iqbal. Uh, and from Sri Lanka, we had uh, Dimutu Daluwate. Uh, all the audience, um, the, the program was jointly organized by Youth Development Center, Scientist Environment and Energy, South Asia Partnership, and Land Our Future. I thank you all for uh, being keeping the patience we in this webinar. It was really wonderful hearing from all all of the speakers here. All the speakers were uh, nicely presented uh, on the COVID-19 situation of their country. Uh, thank you uh, from here. I'd like to thank all of you for being with us next Wednesday at 2 p.m. We'll, uh, at 2 Nepali time, we'll uh, be coming with another of the youth interaction. Um, hope till then the COVID-19 situations, um, uh, we get some good news regarding COVID-19. Uh, the medicine should come uh, fastly than the vaccine. We are waiting very uh, highly, should come very fast. So thank you everyone for being uh, Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Press the bell icon.